welcome back to my channel. My name is Carol and I'm a freelance lifestyle journalist who also runs AlmostDiplomatic.com. It's where I share about my life as a millennial diplomat's wife, the good life on a budget, and currently living in and traveling from Berlin. Today's video is going to be about the struggles diplomatic families face and some tips on how you can cope. So let's dive right in. There will be days when you will miss telling your family and friends about the random things that you experience during the day. True, you can send them a message through your smartphone or even get them on a video call, but sometimes you will find that things are getting harder and will take a lot more time to explain to them, especially since they are not in the same place as you are and are not experiencing the same things. There will be days when you get busy and you won't have time to call or text them, and vice versa. Later on, you will feel that their lives are moving on without you. And let me tell you, that's okay. First, you have to understand that these things happen and your life should be moving on as well. The moment you plant yourself in your new city, ready to take on daily life and immerse yourself, your life will also be moving on in a different direction. That's inevitable. Calls and texts will start to lessen and stories will be reserved for days when you actually have more free time. This, however, does not mean that your relationship is on the decline. It only means that you're giving each other the space to live your lives while you are away from your home country. When you come back, your family will still welcome you with open arms and if your friends are true, they will do the same. You will also have time to play catch up. Remember that you can't keep living your life missing what's at home or at a previous posting. You have to find something for yourself in your new city and this is for your sanity. It might sound utterly simple, but aside from calling or texting your family and friends back home, another thing that can help you from getting homesick is food. I find that going to a restaurant that serves Filipino food or sometimes even Malaysian food since I miss it as well is a great way to combat homesickness or previous posting sickness. No restaurant serving the cuisine in your current city? Then try cooking it at home. It might not taste exactly the same, you might not be the best cook in the world, but then it actually helps, like the effort and even like trying to copy the taste that you miss so much. Watch movies from your home country. Streaming services like Netflix usually have a huge selection of movies from all over the world. You can also listen to music from home via Spotify or watch YouTube vloggers showcasing what's new in your home country. It helps keep you updated and you know, still part of the crowd. Make friends with your kababayans in your current city. Utilize Facebook groups or sites like meetup.com or Eventbrite. You might find expat events where they will also be there and then you will find a connection right away. Sometimes even just wearing something from home helps with your mood immensely. So a few days ago, I was talking to some friends about the latest beauty trends and today I made sure that I'm wearing some Filipino products on my face, like Happy Skin on my lips and Sunny's face on my eyes. Homesickness, I feel, can be easier to combat if you are part of a diplomatic family. I can only imagine how hard it must be for people who are traveling to work abroad under a private capacity. The diplomat of the family works in an environment that almost feels like home, especially since it's practically full of people from the same country as well. The family of the diplomat gets the same feeling by extension, especially since they are invited to almost the same events and are considered as part of the organization as well. If you're an expat who still doesn't have much friends yet and is feeling rather homesick, then I can only imagine how hard that must be for you. For Filipinos, the embassies abroad usually have events for Filipinos in their jurisdiction to be able to reconnect with their home country and to meet their fellow Filipinos as well. So what you can do if you're Filipino and you're feeling rather homesick, check out the website of the embassy near you or check their social media pages because if they're having an event that's open to all Filipinos in the area, then they would usually announce it there. Becoming or marrying a diplomat is like signing up for a lifetime of adventure. Well, until he or she retires at least. You get the amazing perk of living abroad long enough to immerse yourself in the culture. You also get to go home and spend a couple of years there in between every tour of duty to make sure that you don't forget who you are and re-immerse yourself in your own culture. It's the best of both worlds. However, there is no guarantee where you will end up next. When my husband was about to get posted back in 2014, at that time he was 30 years old and I was 26, he was really keeping his fingers crossed that we get a country where it's relatively safe for a woman to go out by herself because as he already knows, I'm not someone to be tied inside an apartment. 
We got really lucky when he was chosen for Kuala Lumpur and now Berlin. Usually, diplomats only find out where they are headed a few months before they are supposed to leave. And after you find out, then it's a race against time to settle everything that you have to leave behind. Phone bills, responsibilities that need to be outsourced, you have to think about these things and make sure that you get them done right before you go. My advice would be to embrace the adventure. There's no such thing as the best country to get posted in and the worst country to get posted in. All of this is relative. Wherever one ends up in, I believe that it's always your attitude and your disposition which makes the posting either good or bad. When we were posted in Kuala Lumpur, there were times when my husband had to be away for two weeks at a time to lead a consular mission. This responsibility was rotated among the officers of the embassy, so he had to do it a couple of times a year. In all fairness, that is still a pretty manageable time apart. At least, the two of us were together in the actual posting in Kuala Lumpur. Sometimes, diplomats can be posted in areas where safety can be a major issue. Thus, their families are advised to stay behind. One of my friends whose husband works for another foreign ministry had to live away from her husband for a year while he was posted in a country where there were high security risks. They were able to survive that time of their lives, but not without much worry or stress. So my advice would be to utilize technology as much as you can. Call whenever time permits and send them positive messages, like tell them that you miss them, but not to worry about you as much because you don't want them getting stressed while they are away as well. You should also surround yourself with people who bring a positive energy into your life and know that separation won't be forever. This I think was the most difficult for me. Growing up, I've always wanted to be a journalist and I got my dream. I was working for an English news channel which later on became CNN Philippines and I was also covering a topic that I was very passionate about and the people I work with would always tell me that I was good at and it was international affairs. I had set goals for myself and I was doing pretty well on the steps that I was taking into getting them. However, I had to leave. It was weird not having a 9 to 5 or in my case an 8 to 10, sometimes even more. But I loved working so much and not even getting my own paycheck was something that felt so weird. The answer? Freelancing. In my previous video, I've shared some information about working abroad as a diplomatic spouse and you can view that video by clicking here. I think it's here. Yeah, maybe here. No, maybe here. If you want something more elaborate about working abroad as a diplomatic spouse, drop me a line in the comment section or on social media and click subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you will know once a more elaborate video about working abroad is finally up. I read somewhere that as we age, it gets harder to make friends and a lot of people were able to relate to that article. I however did not and my husband still likes to joke about that. It's a trait that is pretty common in my family. My father is in commercial real estate, he sells buildings and he is just super friendly, he is such a good talker and meanwhile my grandmother who I actually grew up with is also practically similar, like she could make friends with anyone. She could be at the doctor's waiting for her appointment. She could be in a jeepney and the next person like right before they get off the jeepney they'll actually be friends. I find that just having a genuine interest about the people that you meet and approaching different situations with curiosity, wonder and a dash of humor often helps a lot. That's a great first step in breaking the ice. You know, a lot of encounters that we have in the diplomatic circle can be pretty superficial. It's more of like, hi, hello, where are you from, what do you do? I consider myself pretty lucky because I always meet people who I can really connect to and they've turned out to be friends through these years. However, for a lot of people, the conversation can end right then and there. If you're finding it hard to find friends in the diplomatic circle, don't fret. There's a world out there. The moment you leave the expat and diplomat bubble, you will meet locals and you will get to know the country you are posted in more. If you're lucky, you will find lifelong friends in that country and you will stay connected even if you're not there anymore. Just make sure that you are open to the possibilities. However, I am getting ahead of myself again. To expound on this topic deserves another video. People all over the world are different and once you move out of your country, no matter how much you've traveled before, you will still find things that are pretty much hard to understand because you are coming from a different perspective. 
It's okay to be shocked, confused, or even sad if you feel affronted by what other people think is normal but is inappropriate back home. Know that you will have to go beyond stereotypes. Once you move to another country and live there, you will start to see bit by bit the nuances of a culture and understand why they do the things they do. The work of a diplomat is about building bridges and that extends to you, the spouse. So immersing yourself in the culture of your host country while sharing your own is part of the job. Nobody and no culture is perfect, so take these moments as lessons so that you can understand them more. It doesn't happen right away, so also be patient. See the differences from a place of respect and understanding and learn not to sweat the small stuff. It can be hard and you don't have to be good at it right away, but it is something that you can keep working on. I love languages and learning them never really felt like a chore. So my advice would be to pick up as much words as you can right away to make daily life easier. I'm not fluent in German or even Bahasa Melayu, but I know enough words to live a day-to-day -day life. It's best to know words that will help you do the groceries and some shopping for your home because these are some of the things that you will be doing right away. You also need to know how to order your food in the local language, helps with the waiters even though they're really good at speaking English, but trying really helps a lot. And also, you need to learn the words that will help you to get from point A to point B. Don't be shy and just try speaking. People in your host country would always appreciate you doing so. When I was a full-time journalist covering our foreign ministry back home, some of the officials would tell me, take the exam, be a diplomat. However, I would always respectfully decline. I knew I was someone who was not very good at being diplomatic. That was because I never really had a filter. And until now, I'm still working on that. To be a diplomat is to be a public servant. And the job includes following procedures that sometimes take time. Coming from the media, I was hardwired to want everything done fast. But when I fell in love with my husband, I found myself living in the same world that he is in, especially when I have to accompany him to official functions. So I guess I really wasn't meant to get away. As I mentioned in my previous video, being a spouse of a diplomat comes with a certain level of expectations, especially when it comes to your behavior. Helping out at the embassy, especially when they are throwing events, is also pretty much expected. I see it as a duty to your country and your chance to be able to give back for the opportunities that you are being given. I don't have a full-time job at post, so I make sure that I take time from my personal and my freelancing life to be there when extra hands are needed. My advice would be to immediately find a balance between being yourself and learning to navigate the diplomatic life. Just because you're in the diplomatic circle and making sure you are an asset to your country doesn't mean that you are living a lie. You can still be you, but always within reason and in proper behavior. At this point, I'd like to give a shout out to Diplomat TV, Travaholic Carol. She reached out to me yesterday on Instagram and her message really made my day. Thank you so much for being so supportive and I'm so glad that you found my content helpful. In the next video, I will be sharing how some days in my life as a diplomat's wife look like so if you're interested to find out whether it's true that we're just having lunch every day with our friends or if we're drinking champagne starting at 10 a.m. then do subscribe and click the notification bell so that you know once that video is up for now I hope you have a fruitful wonderful day and I will see you in the next one bye